Welcome to TRS Clips. I began this channel because sometimes on YouTube, you just want to go on learning sprees. So after this fantastic video, make sure you watch the other videos on the channel. Hit like, subscribe and enjoy. Why don't we talk about his ascent to power? Because I believe there was a Bollywood movie being made about it called Takht. And whatever little I've read about the story of Takht seems to be based on the fact that there was this... Uh, kind of power struggle between Aurangzeb and his brothers and he had to kill a bunch of his brothers to actually ascend to the throne. And the kind of consensus is that he was the most evil of all the brothers and the other <laughs> brothers were better. But ma'am, you go on. <laughs> As I told you, it was the it was the legacy of the Mughal. It was the history that they have to kill whoever is claiming the throne and then become the emperor. Please do not blame Bacha Aurangzeb alone. You mean one of the younger siblings or someone later on in the succession line has to kill the ones ahead of him? No, he not has to kill. Whoever survives after killing others, not has okay. to kill. Everybody is trying to kill each other. But the survivor of the whole entire drama will become the emperor. As I told you, either you have the throne or you go into the grave. There are only two options you will have. If you were Aurangzeb, if you were Darashiko, if you were Murad, or if you were Shah Shuja, the four sons of uh, Shah Jahan. So you choose. You And I don't blame Aurangzeb because Shah, uh, uh, Darashiko, whom we praise and whom we, uh, you know, like because he was secular, he was so, he was very good looking and he was the Ladla, I don't know exact English word in that. The darling. The darling of Shah Jahan. So he was always given the... See, even as a Mughal prince, if you are a Mughal prince, you are given certain provinces and you get, you get to get some money out of those provinces. So he was given the excellent, fertile provinces of Punjab, wherever on the Ganges, on the belt of Ganges, all fertile uh, land, to uh, Darashiko. Then uh, Shah Shuja was sent to Bengal. Uh, Shah Shuja, they say, was a womanizer. And Murad, who was a drunkard, youngest of them, was sent to Gujarat. And Aurangzeb, who, wa who, who was a threat to Shah Jahan, whom he thought is a threat to him, was sent on provinces like, fight your, uh, fight your war in Kabul borders. Get me Kabul. Or you go to Deccan. These are not fertile lands. You are not getting money in from that. And when you get less money, you have less military power because you can't pay the you can't give the land to Mansabdars and ask them to keep the cavalry. So all these problems. So Aurangzeb, what happened in the process? Uh, Dara Shikho grew up thinking he is the next emperor. And he spent all his time discussing religion with Hindu pandits and Christian pundits and Muslim pundits. As an attempt to create a more stable empire in the future? No, he was just interested in that. Okay. He was interested in those subjects. He was an intellectual. I'll tell you what he's, one of the poems I love is, why do I have to, uh, as a rain, I'm a raindrop. Huh? Why do I have to fall in the ocean and become a pearl? I don't want to be that. I want to become the ocean. This is going to take some time for me to understand the meaning. So I will let you explain your meaning of this poem. So he says, I may, as a, we see, raindrops fall in the, uh, in the shell. that, uh, And then they become pearl, pearls. He said, I don't want to become a pearl. I want to become the entire ocean. Is that? Is, I don't want to limit myself to become a pearl. He didn't want to become the emperor and wanted... No, no, he didn't say, he doesn't say that. He did want to become the emperor. See, when you write poems, it's not that always you write the truth. It's just the beauty of the poem. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. So it's like, I don't want to just become the pearl and then, you know, restrict myself to become a pearl. I, I want to fall in the ocean to become the ocean. No, but unfortunately, he got killed. Uh -huh. So he got killed because, now you tell me, Shah, who was, only, only thing was Aurangzeb was very good on the battlefields and that's what counted. 
excellent in battlefield and his mansabdar and their cavalry forces were ex were real ruthless uh, soldiers this is excellent on the battlefield angle Haan. what does it actually translate to its military tactics were very good military tactics then it it is the practice you know if you spend your life on the battlefield then you become you know what tactics to apply experience experience because he was there sent is exactly mm. experience that is what i am trying to tell you experience so shah jahan sent him far out to give him a tough challenge no tough challenge but he became stronger stronger mm. yeah there were lot of hassles uh, shah jahan was always i always see nobody no baby is born cruel and no baby is bad or good it's the circumstances so i do not want to outright said bacha aurangzeb was bad man or uh, abdul khan was bad man or uh, mirza rajay jay singh the one who could have become the emperor of india uh, joined uh, the mughal forces and he is uh, idiot or a bad man no is this the circumstances you know that is what i try to depict in my books how circumstances played uh, played role in bacha aurangzeb's life so when he was in the deccan when he was in the deccan uh, you have to send some see 20% of the earnings you have to send some money has to go to the empire or the all the money has to go to the emperor's treasury and then he will send you money or something like that it was so there was lot of fight between father and son according to shah jahan he blamed uh, aurangzeb that you are cheating me and you are not sending the entire money and because he was and aurangzeb said this is these are my um, uh, uh, books you know uh, these are my account books look at that i am not cheating you so there was lot of misunderstandings so what was aurangzeb strategy now he is very clever you know he is very very clever now he thought i don't have money and my father is going to die soon and i do not want because the entire military forces are going to go to um uh, his brother um, darashiko mm. because he is the ladla the darling of the masses and even the emperor so how do i become strong how do i become strong i have this um, kutub shahi adil shahi nizam shahi was almost winning these two shahis are there if i conquer them i will get 10 to 15 crores of rupees you know they are lying in their treasury they were rich hyderabad was a rich very rich uh, state you can read in why it was rich rich you can read in challenging destiny what's the short uh, yeah summary? so they had lot of trade that they had diamond trade they had uh, they had elephant cavalry trade with who with the entire world see whatever little world was there the diamonds of hyderabad were very famous they had spices and they, it was a rich country you see and that is why uh, another character comes in i forget the name of that character meer jumla meer jumla's character is there very famous in my books so what he thought that if i capture now they are giving paying me tribute and they have not paid the mughal empire tribute for long long time if i capture them and make make them deccan provinces provinces of the empire and i am a De De deccan uh, subedar of the mughal they they were the subedars you know aurangzeb was the mughal subedar of the mughal acquired deccan okay so if i get these um, kingdoms or shahis as provinces of the mughals then i get i can lay hand on their entire wealth and i become rich and i can keep mansabdars and improve my army so he went and attacked he went and attacked adil shahi he went and attacked hyderabad hyderabad he almost captured but they wrote to shah jahan that your son is getting too powerful call him back so shah jahan sent a firman do not touch kutub shahi and he had to come back aurangzeb had to come back but still he acquired some land and money from them and he strengthened this army so this way he he was going against his father's wishes to become powerful and in the end he did become powerful and then comes the treachery first he made himself little powerful in the uh, uh, on the basis of having more mansabdars and more army 
because he squeezed, squeezed some money out of Qutub Shahi, some money of Adil Shahi, and he bought their soldiers. So when he became powerful enough, then he knew that Murad is a brother who can be used. And what he writes to Murad, that Dara Shikho is a mulhid, means an idolater. Mulhid means it's like a, it's a curse in, Ur, in Persian that he is non-believer. Because he is discussing defunct politics of Aristotle and uh, Pluto with Hindu pandits. So how uh, he can be, he, uh, we have to cut him down with Islamic sword. Okay. Murad was the drunken. Drunkard. And Murad had, there was a big history in Murad also. Why I am explaining this, that this, how Shivrai used all this history, you know. So he wrote to uh, Murad and he said that, uh, look, uh, you know, uh, we both can join together. I am to, I, I, I am to like, uh, I don't want to become the emperor. I am very, like, I am very religious and I want to go into uh, the uh, path shown by our religion. So I want you to become the emperor. He wrote, the letter is there. I am talking with the correspondence. Eh? Nothing, no, uh, there is no dispute on this. And then um, we will join hands and we will attack. Uh, when Shah Jahan, the news of Shah Jahan's illness started filtering in, he writes this to Murad and says that we will attack them together. And you, I want to make you the emperor. Because I don't have any um, desire to become the emperor or Bacha. What desire I have to cut down the person who is going against our religion. So Murad joined him in that war of succession. Why did he fall for it? Now that is Mur that he wasn't that intelligent perhaps. I don't know why. That, see, certain things in history we don't really know. Why people acted the way they acted. But as per my instincts, in my historical fiction, I have given the reason why he acted. Because alone he could not have done anything. Alone he would have died anyway. And he had committed a lot of crimes in Gujarat. For that he was punished later by Aurangzeb himself. So he joined Aurangzeb and his forces and Aurangzeb's forces. Then they went through, towards uh, Ujjain. Where they, um, where they faced a, a very brave Rajput, uh, not Mirza Raja Jai Singh, Jaswan Singh Rathod. And Jaswan Singh Rathod had come to fight the war to, with them, sent by Shah Jahan, uh, to protect his uh, darling Dara Shikho. And they massacred the, the entire 10,000 Rajputs were massacred in that war. Uh, so that was now war of succession had started. No? So uh, then um, this uh, Murad and Aurangzeb proceeded towards Agra. They defeated Jaswan Singh Rathod. Uh, he, was, uh, he was the king of most powerful Rajput kingdom. And the force was so huge. You know? So Dara Shikho came to the south of Agra with his forces and he hesitated for two, three days. Because he was never on the battlefield. So he says, what should I do? Shall I attack? Shall I not attack? He had 40, 50,000, uh, I mean, cavalry, uh, cavalry forces. Either elephant or uh, horse. So he wasted three days. In that three days, that was a month of, I think it was summer that time. And these people have come from Ujjain to Agra. You see how tem the temperatures must have been. Hmm. So... In three days, uh, Aurangzeb's army could relax. And there he took the, there he used the religion. There he lectured his soldiers that how important our religion is and our religion sword should come down on Dara Shikho. So many orthodox mansabdars, they joined Aurangzeb. See, he used, I'm not talking any religion is bad or good. How you perceive it, and how you use it to your advantage. Mm -hmm. You can use it for good. You can use it for bad. Then the relaxed army of uh, Aurangzeb and Murad. And they had a big fight there. Huge war happened. Not fight. Huge. Not even war. Battle happened. The right word is battle. In that battle, 
lot of forces joined Aurangzeb. Dara's forces ran away to Aurangzeb. And uh, the entire army was massacred. Dara Shikos, who stood by him. And then he ran away. That's him. He fell down from the... Um, uh, you can read in my book how he fell down from the elephant and how he was saved and uh, he rescued. And he ran away to into the um, uh, Agra fort and hid there. And from there he ran away to Delhi and from there he ran away to, uh, to the borders of Afghan. From there he ran away. I mean Afghanistan and Iran. He was he not Afghanistan and Iran. Bolan Pass. That is known as Bolan Pass. Which is where geographically? Which is uh, thousand. Uh, I exactly now don't remember. But Bolan Pass is somewhere in Baluchistan or some that area. Okay. I don't know. He was, I'm not sure. Huh? Please. Because but he survived. Too, He's, no, no. Then he was caught by Mirza Rajay Jai Singh. Mirza Rajay Jai Singh was Shah Jahan's right-hand man. He, after Shah Jahan was imprisoned by Aurangzeb, he uh, came to Aurangzeb. He left Shah Jahan. And then he went to Bolan Pass and caught uh, Dara Shikho and brought him back to Delhi. And then where he was, he was put to a trial, um, you know, and sh under Sharia law and he was beheaded. That is his story. Beheaded for? Beheaded for being uh, being uh, a mulhid, uh, uh, idolater. And uh, uh, and he he actually, what he did, he wrote a book uh, which is known as uh, Meeting of Two Oceans, Two Religions. So that is his biggest crime. How can he do that? It is, is like, Are books like this still available? I don't know. But he wrote that book. Manuscripts may be available. He wrote that book. Uh, oceans, mingling of two oceans. What's a manuscript? Manuscript is the, uh, like, there were no printing books, printed books, no? So, where, when an author writes the book, which is not a book as yet, but his story is known as manuscript. Okay. Okay. May be available. Go on. So, my, in, the, in that book, I have made, uh, there is a strong character, their sister Jahanara. She was very secular and there is a big conversation which happened between Aurangzeb and uh, Jahanara. It is there in history and it is there in my uh, book also that she tells him that, uh, you know, spare your brothers at least. She loves Dara Shikho very much as a brother. So he then he tells her in my book, don't cast morals. What has father done? You see? Father had massacred 36 of them, including Kushru, Kushru, who was the son of uh, Jahangir uh, and who was uh, blinded and imprisoned by his own father, who was also killed by his uh, half-brother. We don't call step-brothers, they called half-brothers that time, which is Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan massacred 36 of them to come to the power. So there Aurangzeb tells Jahanara, I like to empower women characters, you know, in my book, being a woman writer maybe. Then I love that character Jahanara and I really went deep into her poetry and uh, a lot of things, including Aurangzeb's daughters. What they, was the condition of women? They, see, actually the Mughal women were too, in the eyes of Mughal men, the Mughal women were too precious to marry anybody. <laughs> so they all remained unmarried. Really? Yeah, many of them. Two, Jahan Ara was never married. Aurangzeb's two, uh, Zebun Nisa and Zinatun Nisa were never married. One was imprisoned by Aurangzeb. She was a great poet. Her poetry is amazing. So, you know, these women characters, even Maratha women, are very strong. They were. So now I am thinking of writing a book on Maratha women, non-fiction. The feisty women in Maratha history, mm. which I would like to write mm. if, you know, my health remains good. Thank you for watching. Our team spends a lot of time curating playlists just for you. So make sure you check out all the playlists that we've created on TRS Clips if you want to speed up your learning process.